Good morning, folks. How are we doing? There's the beast. I had to move it from that car park because I didn't trust that French person's parking. Left me no room for a GS. It's freezing this morning. Um, yeah, there was ice all over the cars. So I'm going to check out the hotel. Amazing hotel and spa. Super, super expensive. Um, f I walked into the restaurant last night and I ordered some food. Well, I looked at the menu and when the, <laughs> the chef's name's embossed on the menu cover, um, you know it's going to be quite a high standard restaurant. Michelin starred. Uh, <laughs> Farquhar on the, on the menu and stuff like that. It's fully in French. Um, so I had to figure out what it was. I ordered the beef. It was amazing. Um, cost me like 60 odd quid just for for the meal um, and that was like 9 quid for 8, 9 quid for a, a pint of lager uh, 5 quid for a bottle of water so however we're on holiday so you've got to treat yourself haven't you I'm going to go and check out and I'm going to make my way on right now. look at that no, no. Let me Merci, au revoir. Cheeky monkeys. Do you want change? Yes, I do. Because it's tax. I don't pay a tip on tax. <laughs> Bonjour, madame, monsieur. Ça va, c'est Martin. Bien vu en can. Je suis le Mac, le Epic Motorcyclist. Uh, <laughs> good morning, guys. Welcome to Can. Um, yeah, what we're going to do? First, great first night in France um, after visiting the battlefields. So we're in Can. We're going to make our way down towards. Um, our matches um, visiting the battlefield uh, memorials that I didn't get a chance to go to yesterday so we'll, uh, we'll leave Cannes we'll have a little look at the castle as we go past it and uh, we'll take it from there right I had to move the bike this morning away from the other one the other one the other car that car because look at the parking and there was a beam, a big massive beamer there as well. I didn't really fancy pushing it uphill backwards. Fully loaded. So, sun is starting to come out. I'm feeling overdressed already. Um, but let's get to it. Just give that plenty of space because you've got panniers on. Oh, it's a beautiful morning, guys. Beautiful morning. It was freezing earlier. Um, remember what side of the road you need to be on. Right, off into the left. What's that car doing? Ah! So we are going to turn left. Because I can't turn right, because it's one way road. Yeah, a meal in the restaurant last night was amazing. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, quite expensive, however, it was. Hello. Bonjour.
got the GoPro Hero 7 on the front of my lid this morning and I feel like Bane or Darth Vader Darth Vader and Bane's son be, no, that's just weird and wrong and biologically probably not possible however, science probably could sort something out stands the uh, memorial for the, or a uh, commemorative plaque for the Royal Engineers, who known as Sappers, they came aboard um, uh, Aramaches where just down there is Aramaches, and you can just see the remains of a harbour, so you can see it out there. Um, so the Sappers, Sappers came in D-Day plus one, and basically helped the paratroops and the glider troops to, um, to clear the beach. So what it says is, um, in the early hours of D-Day, parachute and glider-borne engineers, engineer units landed with the airborne troops to remove demolition charges from bridges and create to create obstacles to protect the flanks. Um, so engineer units were in the first few waves, uh, landing on the beaches, equipped with a variety of specialist tanks and clearing mines, crossing the gaps um, in the lines and that, and uh, basically laying trackway. So they could get the um, tired vehicles up the beaches. Then they um, it goes on to say that they built um, D-Day plus one. They built a harbour, started building the harbour, and on D-Day plus nine the harbour was operational. So some 39,000 vehicles and 220,000 men were brought ashore through this um, harbour that the uh, the sappers built. And by the end of 1944 without which the armies could not have been um, sustained so obviously you wouldn't be able to be resupplied without the um, without the sappers doing what they do and building bridges and blowing stuff up so so yes yeah, again if I'm gonna turn the camera around in a second if we look out to sea I'll get as close to the edge as I say if we look out to sea and it's just so calm and I don't know if anybody's seen Save a Private Ryan or um, Band of Brothers, but you imagine being stood. Yeah, you imagine being stood either this side if you were German. So if you were Axis forces, you're German forces, and you stood over this side. Or you're out there on landing crafts. Um, we had a lot of weapons coming and heavy, heavy fire coming down at you. It must have been scary as hell. So, but times change, don't they? And so it's, it's beautifully quiet here. I'm going to go down into Aramatches in a second and get a coffee. And uh, see if we can get some Wi Fi. <laughs> and if I can get some Wi Fi, I might be able to get the drone working. See if we can throw that in the air. Because um, it would look stunning from the air, this place. So, I'm just going to have a little pan around shot for you.
So I've just stopped at Arrow Matches. Uh, sorry, I just stopped um, at the Ar yeah Arrow Matches 360. So there's a museum over there to take some photos and just to look out over at the harbour because obviously I'm at an elevated view from here. As some Danish guy comes over and jokes to me, he says, because uh, the bike was parked over there, he says, you know you're on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, he came back over and he was um, asking me what I thought about <laughs> about this bike for touring on. <laughs> and uh, we ended up, he's a sports biker, and we ended up chatting motorbikes for a bit. That guy's just been down the bottom of the hill. There's a big, massive, steep hill down there. He's obviously just cycled in his uh, craziness. Yeah, uh, so going back to the Dan Danish guy. And, uh, yeah, he um, asked me what I thought about this. And I said, highly recommend it. And um, then he was talking about doing when he's done the Alps and stuff on a sports bike. And I said I'd done the Alps on a sports bike, and I said I wish I had the GS. Um, and I told him what I'd done with it, and yeah, that I'd love this bike. And um, he was saying in Denmark they haven't really got many twisty roads. It's pretty flat if you go to the west of Jutland, but the east of Jutland is a little bit more hilly. So yeah, the east of Jutland's a little bit more hilly and twisty, so for future reference uh, on a possible future tour. You never know. Have a motorbike, we'll travel, guys. Anyway, I'm going to hop back on the bike, head down into Aramatches um, itself, take a few more photos, and uh, moving on, guys. It's really cool the amount of people that are doing tours around here. There's a lot of... What's cooler is it's all young kids. It's not old... What you would perceive to be veteran age or ex-military. A lot of kids. And um, it's good to see. The sun's starting to come out as well. So I might have to ditch the grab jacket. Better get on the right side of the road. Literally. For my Danish friend. <laughs> Okay, so we're just dropping down into Aramaches itself now, and um, like I said earlier, it's it's twinned with Instow, a little small village near where I live. I'll grab a coffee, some luncheon. There we go, Instow. So I'll grab a coffee, some luncheon, and baguette. Port of Vaux. Um, and then we'll crack on to um, Omaha. We'll go this way. She knows where she's going. Alright, let's see if we can find somewhere to park and not have to pay. Hmm, a bit like that. Motor, motor parking. Ah, oh, there's a motorbike there. Whoa, <laughs> that curb's not pretty. Pleasant. How did he get that in there? I don't know. Did you go through there where the buses are? Do you reckon I can fit through there? I don't know. I am talking to myself. Oh yeah. That just happened.
that just happened. I'm going to leave it in first though. Oh, ice cream. It's good that they, um, they do school trips, remind the kids of it, because it's not going to be long now before there's nobody left who was there. Um, so yeah. So yeah, I'm going to get coffee. I've said so yeah three times in that same sentence. I'm going to get a coffee and some food, maybe some Wi-Fi, hopefully some Wi-Fi. And um, chicken drone up. <laughs>